In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Event Calendar Newsletter and Active Campaign together to customize how your events are pulled in to your newsletter automatically. So I'm going to start right now. Uh, this example uh, campaign is using a feed where it's just able to grab the image, the title, and the date. Uh, but the date isn't in the format they want. Uh, they like to have some additional uh, data in there, such as maybe the location city and a couple other things, and also have the date you know, in, in the UK format, which is day, month, year. So uh, to be able to do this, uh, I'm going to need to format it in you know, a similar way to this. So I can start with how their current campaign is formatted. Uh, otherwise, you can create the HTML yourself. So to be able to grab kind of this HTML, I'm going to want to preview this campaign. And then if I scroll down, here are the events. So if I right click on this in Chrome and then go to inspect, I can kind of see uh, the HTML that's being generated for each of these events and their current formatting. So if I scroll up, I just want to grab uh, a single event. So you can see how it's being highlighted at the top. Uh, so if I go here, that looks like that is basically for a single event. This is the table for the whole thing, but this is a single event row. So if I copy this and then I right click and go to copy, and then if I go into event calendar newsletter, you're able to select all the different options. So we've got, uh, we want to do for the next six months. In this case, I just want the HR conference uh, events in that category. And then we've got kind of a basic template here, but I'm going to want to go to the text tab and highlight this and then paste in the HTML that I just grabbed that's in the format I want for a single event. So if I paste that in, we can see that it's uh, quite a lot of kind of inline styling and code, um, which is basically just what's being generated. And you do need to use inline styling with uh, HTML campaigns because clients like Gmail and some others won't uh, look at kind of non inline styling. So it does end up being a bit messy, but that's fine. So if we look at, uh, we basically want to take, you know, the hard coded image and title and date and replace it with tags from event calendar newsletter. So if I scroll down, we can see here the image tag, and it has the hard recorded URL of that particular image for that particular event. But if I remove this and then put in the tag, which is event image URL, which will just be the URL of the image for that event. And then if I scroll down a bit more, I want to replace the title. Well, actually the link to the event as well. So if I remove this, I want to put in link URL, which is also up here. So I could have actually done, just highlighted this, go to link URL, insert, and it'll do the same thing. And then we've got our title here. I'm just going to actually want to put in the tag for the title. You can see that's replaced here. And if I keep scrolling, there's also the date. If I highlight that, pick start date insert and there we go so if i so this keeps the existing format it's got a single table row uh you know it's a bit messy but we can try and clean that up but if i go to generate newsletter events we can see it's grabbing the same events and if we look at the result html if i save this as a template and click save now i can go to view save templates and we see the new one I just created here. So if I copy the feed URL, this is what Active Campaign needs to know where the feed from Event Calendar Newsletter is coming from. Go into our campaign, edit the RSS feed, and paste in the feed. Now if we preview, we see we just have the title and a date. But if we, we want to delete the title and then instead of just date we want to pick content encoded which is basically all the html for each event and if we click update 
we can see that it's showing up here. And it doesn't look exactly like it did before, but if I go to preview and then desktop preview, and we see it looks pretty much exactly the same as it did before, but it's got the date format in the UK format, which is the same as the format on the WordPress website. So now at this point we could simplify the HTML a bit. So if I go view the save template and we see we've just really got a lot of HTML that doesn't necessarily need to be there. You know, we've got a, a table cell here and then we've got a table within the table cell, which also has another table inside of it as well. But if I just take, I basically just want the one column to be 25% of the width and then I want the image within that. We can see that all this stuff is pretty duplicated. If you're going to do this level of customization, you're probably going to need to know a bit of HTML. Delete this. You wrap the whole thing in a table. Delete some of this, all this extra stuff that's there. Going to want a bit of uh, padding uh, so that it's, the image isn't right up against the text, which was in kind of that HTML before. So there's kind of the, the first row, there's the first cell. Then again, similarly, we can kind of get rid of a lot of this cruft. We'll keep the styling on the, the title text there and the link. And then instead of having this whole cell and table and everything else, I can just put the date right underneath. And then wrap the whole thing in a table. And now because I've not only simplified it, but also wrapped it in a table, the visual tab should work. So we can see we've got the image. It doesn't load because it's our tag, uh, but we can put like the title on a separate line by holding shift and hitting enter. And then if we go back into our text, we can see we've got our, our link to the event. We've got our title. We've got a line break there. And then we've got the start date. And if we want to add maybe something like uh, the location name or city, say, insert that in. You can see the text updates. And then we can basically save the template so it'll be updated. I can continue to uh, play around with the HTML and the formatting. And once I'm kind of happy with it, I can go back into Active Campaign. And now, unfortunately, Active Campaign remembers uh, the previous version of the feed. So we kind of have to add something to the end just to kind of uh, kick Active Campaign into gear and say, okay, look at the new version. Um, I've emailed them to see if uh, this is something they can fix. So it can just kind of automatically refresh. But for now, you basically can just add something like question mark V equals two. And that just tells Active Campaign to look again. And just like we did before, we have to just pick the content encoded update. And you can see we've got the title, the date, and now we have the location name as well. And if I go to preview again and scroll down, we can see the formatting, which doesn't exactly look like it does in the preview. You can see the text is a bit uh, larger. So you kind of want to use the preview to uh, get a, a more real idea of how uh, the campaign would look make uh, one last change. I will uh, can change the size of the image that's coming in. Right now it's being defined by the column. So right now it's 25% of the width is the cell that has the image and then 75% in the cell that has the title and location, day, uh, city, and the start date. So if I want to make that a bit bigger, I could add that to 40% and drop this down to 60 Again, save the template, go back into active campaign. Again, I have to change this so I could just change it to uh, question mark V equals three. Again, pick the content encoded update. Now we can see the image is a bit larger. And again, we want to use the preview to get a better idea. Scroll down, we can see the images are a bit lar larger compared to how they were before. But we have our title, our link, 
our date and our location city name for events that have it. So that's it. Any questions, feel free to reach out over at eventcalendarnewsletter.com. And once you've set it up and you're happy with it, all you'll need to do is add events to your calendar in WordPress and they'll be pulled in automatically.